much, guys. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you very much for having me as well. Um, I'm always happy to do this, talk a little bit about RIT. I can usually go on for like five hours, but we'll keep it a bit short and I'll try to cover everything um, that, that is the most interesting part, of course, for, for agents and their students. So I'm going to share my presentation. It's quite a big presentation, but as I said, I will go through it um, a little bit quickly and I think I will cover everything, but I will, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have um, at the end of the presentation. So I know that um, not only RIT, I'm going to talk a little bit about studying in Croatia in general and know that this is quite a new territory um, for quite a lot of agencies. It's a new, new, new thing for us as well. We've only boarded the international recruitment train a few years ago. Um, so we are still putting ourselves on the map as a country that's a little bit more than just a, a tourist country. Uh, you all know us through Game of Thrones and, and football and kind of our, our beautiful coast, but we are much more than that. Um, and uh, hopefully your, your students will have some interest uh, in Croatia as a study destination as well. Um, just a short thing about our RIT, who I am and where I come from. Well, my name is Marcela. I'm the recruitment and enrollment specialist at RIT Croatia. Um, so we are basically a global campus of Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York, um, which means there are like mother institution that opened uh, their campuses all over the globe um, in Dubai, in Croatia, here in Zagreb and in Dubai. Um, in Kosovo and in China. So we are absolutely everywhere. Uh, I am here currently located in Zagreb um, and uh, RIT in New York uh, is uh, very well known as a, one of the largest uh, uh, private universities um, in the US and it has a very old history of doing their co-ops which is something that they are very very famous for and uh, we of course implement that part as well. Um, if any of you would uh, like a contact of some of my colleagues from the other campuses I would be more than happy to connect you with them as well. But let's, uh, let's welcome you a little bit to Croatia. Um, you can see uh, those two not, not so random cities on this photo. Uh, both of those cities are, are uh, uh, Zagreb and Dubrovnik where RIT Croatia has its campuses. Um, they are very different. Um, Zagreb is a capital, a bit more cosmopolitan, um, quite rushed like every, every European capital is. And then Dubrovnik is an entirely different story. It's a, a, you know, a coastal city. Um, it is a very, very different Mediterranean vibe. It is a smaller city, uh, historical. Uh, so uh, I think that there's something for everyone. Uh, so that's just just so that you can see see the pretty pictures before we head on to the to the text. Um, so generally about studying in Croatia, um, I know that these are the information that, that parents often ask you as well uh, about the safety of the country. Well, Croatia is one of the safest countries in the world for years now, but according to the Global Peace Index, and it really is true. I've been here um, my entire life and I think it's an amazing place not only to live, but especially to be a student in. Um, it's quite a young and vibrant country. It's small enough for students to be able to explore everything. And it's located in a great, great place if students want to explore the rest of Europe um, as well. Well, of course, high English proficiency, uh, English is uh, a, you know, a compulsory language in all of our uh, schools from, from age seven, um, which kind of means that we are quite proficient in English. And of course, due to our tourism being on the rise in the last 10 years, um, everyone kind of had to learn English quite quickly if they wanted to provide um, a good service. So students do not need Croatian to get by. Um, of course, in the university, especially everything here, here is entirely in English. Um, so students don't need any Croatian to get by. But of course, um, if they wish to learn some Croatian, um, we provide them with free courses to do so. Um, often they decide it just so that they can kind of embrace themselves a, a little bit into the culture and kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, just know some some basics so that they can they can get around. Costs of living, we are in the EU since 2013, but we still are not in the Eurozone. Um, so our costs of living are among the lowest in the EU still. Um, that has, of course, been changing a little bit, as I think everywhere else when it comes to accommodation prices uh, in, in the city. So that's something that's been on the rise. But uh, in general, it is quite quite a cheap, cheap country to live in. Um, I've just put some approximate prices here for you so that you can just get a better, better picture of what it looks like. Um, when it comes to accommodation, I know that is a very par important part for your students as well. Um, in Zagreb, RIT Croatia does not have its dormitories. So what we do, we uh, help our students find accommodation um, by offering them up to five options of apartments 
apartments they can choose from based on their budget and their preferences. So if they want to have a roommate um, or if they want to live alone, um, we match them up with other RIT international students so they're not going to be with some strangers um, and we make sure uh, to secure their accommodation before they arrive uh, to Croatia. Um, also, Dubrovnik, on the other hand, just opened a brand new dorm a year ago. Um, it looks amazing. It is a brand new, uh, a, a large modern dorm with a gym, a restaurant. It really looks, um, it looks amazing and it is very affordable. For both domestic and international students, the prices are the same and they are 150 euros per month for accommodation. And um, since the dorm has only been opened yet, there is plenty of space. So all of our students from last year managed to secure a place in the dorm. Um, and as it looks like the situation will be the same this year as well. Um, so that is a great option for students who, who would like to come to do Dubrovnik. Okay, so, uh-huh, okay. Um, so we always love to say that we are very different from everyone else, as everyone else says, uh, also for their university, but uh, we are uh, different when it comes to it comes to this territory where we're located, but the only American university here in the region. Um, and we are, uh, as I explained, a global campus of Rochester. So that is something that, that you know, surrounding countries around us uh, don't have yet. So that's how we kind of try and stand out by being the only Americans uh, here in the region. Uh, Career-oriented education. I mentioned previously a little bit about the co-op program. That is very important for us. Our students have compulsory internships ships, compulsory co-ops after their second and their third year. So that is a prerequisite for them to graduate. Of course, our career services helps them secure their internship by forwarding open positions to students um, so that they can apply for them. They, you know, build up their CV. They help them with mock interviews, um, but students need to secure their internship, um, which is, of course, always a paid position that is during the summer after their second and their third year of studies. Global experience, well, we are a global campus, so we do kind of push our students to take advantage of everything that we offer to go on Erasmus programs, to go uh, spend a semester or a year in one of our campuses in Dubai or in Rochester. Um, so there's a lot of things that we kind of offer to our students and we really, really um, want them to experience this um, and they will be surrounded with other international students. So I guess that's a start already coming to RIT and kind of leaving your comfort zone. Uh, and starting somewhere new. Student-centric um, is something that we love to emphasize because our students really are in the middle of their own story and we are only here to support them. So every student gets their own peer mentor, uh, their tutor, their professor mentor, their academic advisor, their career service officer, their own admission specialist. So there's a bunch of people around them to kind of want them to succeed um, and to give their best. Uh, but of course, the majority of this job is on the students themselves. Uh, it's their journey and we are only here to push them uh, to be the best version of themselves. But of course, all of that, that depends on them as well. So I will uh, only shortly uh, go, uh, go into the programs. I'm not going to uh, stay here too long. If you're going to want some details, of course, I have some materials with that as well. Um, so what we offer here uh, in Croatia is the international business program on our Zagreb campus, the hospitality and tourism management, of course, on our Dubrovnik campus, and the IT or web and mobile computing, both on Dubrovnik and Zagreb campuses. Um, the international business and hospitality do have some similarities, of course, uh, but the hospitality program is more focused on the luxury industry um, and tourism, while international business is um, kind of for students who still want to figure out maybe what direction to go in because it offers them concentrations in marketing, management, and finance that they can choose from on their final year um, so they have enough time to, to figure out what they're good at. Um, and of course, the IT web and mobile computing program um, is uh, created to create full stack developers out of our students so they do not choose whether they want to do web or mobile programming. Um, uh, they will do both and then it's entirely up to them uh, to figure out which one they like better. So this is what I was telling you a little bit about a study studying on our other campuses. It is a great opportunity for our students. I always love to emphasize this. Um, and that's because our students can uh, go to spend a semester or a year in Rochester or Dubai, but their tuition fees stay Croatian. 
So that's something that's very, very important for our students that they don't have to pay the American tuition fees, which are $50,000, uh, but instead they can go on a creation tuition fee, stay up to a year. Um, you know, the only costs, of course, that they have to bear are the costs of accommodation, living costs, uh, and, uh, and uh, sorry, and flight. Um, everything else is secured for them on the campus. They also have student rights where, while they're in the U.S. since they're simultaneously a Croatian and an American student, so students can work on campus um, while spending time on their study abroad. Okay. So, sorry, my presentation skips a bit. Um, so, of course, a very important part, again, um, are the scholarships and the financial aid that we offer. Uh, so, the tuition fees for the next academic year are 6,500 euros per year without any form of scholarship or financial aid. Um, so basically, we have both. They're very different. Our scholarships are uh, entirely based on merit. So students who deserve those scholarships based on their uh, successes uh, in high school education. So all students who got an excellent grade in all levels of their high school education automatically receive 4,000 euro scholarship from RIT because we really, really do put an emphasis on attracting very academically strong students. Um, so when those students apply uh, and we see that they've done excellent in their high school education, we want to encourage them to continue that way at RIT as well. On the other hand, we do have financial aid that is entirely based on the financial situation in the family. So students can apply for that, provide us with the information that we will ask them for, usually pay slips um, and stuff like that from their parents so that our financial committee can determine what amount of financial aid student is eligible for. And those amounts go from 1,000 to 10,000 euros. Again, as the scholarship split throughout the four years of study in form of a tuition fee waiver. So uh, we also have so many competitions going on each year, English language contest, hospitality and tourism, uh, star search, uh, where full scholarships are offered for students. Um, so, you know, when students apply or they get into our database and we always inform them when such competitions uh, come up, uh, which is, of course, open for both domestic and international students, likewise. Um, we also have two intakes per year. One is in September, one is in January. So it often happens, you all know your students, they decide in August that they want to come somewhere in September, and it's not enough time to do um, anything. So January intake is a very popular option for international students who, who kind of underestimate the time they need to prepare for their arrival. Um, and applications are because of that open all year round. But of course, I do recommend specifically for international students to apply at least a few months earlier so that they have enough time to secure their accommodation and prepare everything for their arrival. So how does the application process itself work? Of course, the first step is the online application form um, where students or agents for them uh, can fill out just some basic information so that we can uh, put them in our system. After that, we ask high school transcripts and motivational essay in English. So we do not require IELTS, TOEFL, or any standardized testing. We used to do that a few years before, but we realized that it's often a very a distorted picture of someone's English skills, which is why we introduced an interview, 30 minute interview with each student uh, in English so that we can determine whether the student will be eligible uh, to, you know, uh, follow the follow the lectures in English, participate. Um, and that is the most important part, part of the entire process for us, those 30 minutes um, where we kind of assess not only the language skills, but the motivation of the student and their willingness to come uh, to RIT Croatia to see if they're a good fit for us and if we are of course a good fit for the student as well. So just a little note for you agents, um, when students apply, um, of course, how do we know that they are uh, coming from your agency specifically? This is how our application form looks like. Um, I didn't put, of course, the entire the entire uh, form, but just a part um, where you can see where students can put their referral by the agency so that we can track, of course, um, where our students find out about us. Um, and that, of course, then afterwards we can uh, we can track them. Uh, from your coming from your agency. Okay, so um, once the admissions process is over, so students handed in their high school transcripts, they handed in their motivational essays, been through the interview, and let's presume they've been admitted to RIT. Um, students will wait for the decision three to four weeks after the interview, after which we will send them an acceptance letter, um, an intent form, and the tuition payment options and instructions document where everything will be written. Um, once a student then decides, okay, I I'm, you know, agree with this offer, I want to accept it, they will have to sign the intent form, 
which just to clarify, the entire process is free and non-binding. So students do not have to, even if they sign the intent form, no one will kind of force them uh, to come to RIT. But if they're set in stone and want to keep their financial lane and secure a spot in the university, they have to pay the non-refundable 400 euro deposit that is later on deducted from their tuition fees. So it's not going to be added on top of those tuition fees, but instead we will just deduct it from the first tuition fee payment. Um, after they did all of that, they're officially enrolled at RIT Croatia, and we connect them with our international office that will assist them with accommodation and temporary stay permit. Um, those are quite important stuff, so there's a lot to be done. We usually connect, of course, with the agencies themselves, meet up with our international officers um, so that we can do um, all of that together. Um, and of course, we send the students and the agents the necessary enrollment documentation that needs to be collected prior to the arrival of the student uh, or the students need to bring with them to Croatia. We always do that in a very timely manner so that the students have enough time to prepare everything. Um, uh, and of course, the agents, uh, if they are preparing that part for them as well. So that is um, it from my presentation. Hopefully I covered most, most of the information. Uh, here's my contact as well, of course, if you need it. Um, and I am more than happy to answer your questions. I can see that there's quite a lot. Yeah, so some of them were also in the chat. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so let's go with the first one. Um, will students get their degree from Rochester, USA or RIT? Um, as I understand, it means that do students get the same diploma as the graduates in the USA? Yeah, it's exactly that is a part that, yeah, I forgot to mention, but it is, it's a great question. Um, yes, they get both degrees, actually. Since, since RIT is accredited both in Croatia and in um, America, students get two separate degrees. One is awarded by Rochester Institute of Technology in New York, and the other one is awarded by um, our Ministry of Science and Education in Croatia. So one is in U.S. credits and one is in ECTS points. That's very important for students if they want to proceed to a master's degree. Um, so they kind of use the degree that they need at that moment. But it is exactly the same uh, degree as from Rochester since it's uh, the exactly same program only on a different location. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And the next one, uh, mobility on campuses, is it possible one year in New York, one year in Dubai, one year in Zagreb, for, for, in for instance? Um, kind of. Uh, well, the students can only go up to a year altogether. Um, so they can go one semester Dubai, one semester New York, no problem. Or they can go one year Dubai or one year uh, US, but they cannot go um, on an exchange for longer than, than one year. Of course, they can, but then they would be considered a transfer student. So they would not uh, be able to do so on a Croatian tuition fee anymore. They would have to uh, pay the U.S. tuition fee if they plan on staying uh, longer than a year or Dubai tuition fee, which is kind of very similar to the U.S. one as well. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned about this mo uh, mobility program, that they can go to the Dubai, etc. So the tuition fee stayed the same, but they need to take a look at the, at the accommodation by themselves. Exactly. So um, in both Dubai and uh, Rochester, they have their own dormitories, so they have to stay on the campus. But uh, they have to, of course, pay for their accommodation. We will secure the accommodation for them, but they have to bear the costs of it. They will get offers. You know, U.S. has a campus um, where they can choose whether they want meal plans, maybe. So they have breakfast, lunch and dinner included or they want to cook for themselves. So there's a lot of different price ranges. Um, for study abroad, uh, but they will have secure, secured uh, accommodation. Mm -hmm. And do you also have graduate programs? We do have graduate programs. We have two graduate programs. Um, one is service leadership and innovation, and the other one is master of science in information technology and analytics. They're a little bit different. Um, then our undergraduate, which is why I didn't mention them, uh, they are mainly uh, tailored for uh, people who work because they're always in the afternoon and they've been uh, partially, uh, well, partially online uh, even prior to COVID. So they are for people who cannot make it to the lectures during working hours and then they can connect afterwards and they're specifically accredited in the US. So Rochester performs them. We are only like a house, you know, that, that house is the programs, but they're not accredited in Croatia as well. Um, so students get a Rochester degree and they are quite more expensive and without the option of financial aid. So they are about 6,500 euros for the entire program. Um, and there are some discounts during the year, but there is no financial aid for the graduate programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is, 
will the fees be the same if students are going to choose different campuses? You mean different campuses, Zagreb or Dubrovnik? Or yes, I, I, I think yes. Okay, well, in that case, yes, the fees are the same for, for Zagreb and Dubrovnik campuses, but of course, um, Dubai, uh, Rochester, China, Kosovo, they have their own prices. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, the next one is going to be a little bit huge one. Uh, do you have any application fees? Okay, no. The, Okay, no, no application. No, do no, the whole any... process is free and non-binding. Mm -hmm. Do you need any sponsored document source or, or funds? I think it, mm, what was meant about the financial, you know, status of, of the parents. So once, fin once students apply for financial aid, they click that in their application form online. And if they click that they want to, we will send them a financial aid application form that they have to fill out or their parents um, and send supporting documentation, which is always a proof of funding, whether that be, um, I don't know, a pay slips or, uh, or whatever it is, um, they will have to provide it, um, but uh, they will not need proof of funding directly for the university, but they will need it for their visa. And, and where they come from. And do students need house insurance? House insurance? House insurance. Uh, health insurance, yes, of course, of course, as everywhere else, um, they do need to ha have uh, health insurance, but they can take a travel one for the first year. So for the first year of their arrival in Croatia, they do not have to have the national health insurance. They can provide, a, you know, the one from home or take a travel insurance. Uh, but then after their second year, uh, they have to they take the Croatian national one, which is about 60 to 70 euros a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you provide with, uh, with any scholarship? Yes, as Marcela said, they have a lot of scholarships. Uh, then the information will be at their website and you will also be able to, you know, to message Marcela. And is there any work right to international students? Like, so basically, as I understand, can international students work during the studies? Uh, they can work up to 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, up to 20 hours a yeah. week wherever they come from. So it's it's uh, for EU nationals and for non-EU nationals the same. Mm -hmm. What are an approximate costs of your programs in UAE and USA? Honestly, um, I'm not sure for uh, for Dubai campus. For Rochester, I know that it's about $50,000 per year. Um, and Dubai, I think, is somewhere there as well. I can check for you, and then if you leave me your contact, I can uh, I can send it to you. But I'm honestly not sure because they opened a new campus last year, and I know that the prices can have gone up a bit. Uh, but I don't think that they're any less uh, than the U.S. campus. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And uh, fees are paid after or before getting the visa. Um, well, it depends. The deposit, of course, has to be paid uh, prior to everything that is to confirm the enrollment. Uh, but what happens? So students do not have to pay for the tuition fees prior to applying for their visa. Uh, but their chances, chances of getting a visa are significantly higher if they do, because the embassies always call us. We are in contact with all the embassies and the police station in Croatia, and they call us to confirm whether the student has secured accommodation and whether they have paid for tuition fees. So if we say, okay, the student has only paid the deposit, but hasn't paid their tuition fees, it gives them a bit of a less chance, I think, of obtaining a visa. Uh, but, you know, it, it depends. Usually students at least pay for a semester or one monthly payment before they arrive um, so that they feel more secure in, in coming into Croatia. But it's not uh, a requirement. So, mm -hmm. But, for example, what, what in a situation where, for example, I as a student applied to the RIT and, you know, and I'm Okay, and I got accepted, but I also want to apply for the for the financial aid. So okay. what are my, my steps? So I need to wait till the end of the decision of the financial aid and then apply for visa. Or do I need to pay first and then I can apply for visa? So financial aid has to be applied with together with the admissions process. So once a student receives an admission decision, they receive the financial aid decision at the same time. So they will know once they, you know, got admitted, if they get an acceptance letter, they will automatically know um, how much their financial aid is. So they will know if that's enough or not. And then afterwards, they apply uh, for the visa after they've signed the intent form and paid the non-refundable deposit. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one is, what are the visa? Okay, what is the visa guarantee? Um, so probably what you should do to to get the visa for like for for hundred um, percent. 
that there's never a hundred percent. It very much depends on the country. There is no guarantee. Um, uh, you know, no one can promise you that, but you can do, of course, everything in your power. And that would, in my, you know, professional opinion, I've been doing this for years. So I've got visa rejections and acceptances, and there've never been any problem problems with students who have secured their accommodation, who have the funds on their account um, that will be necessary for them, uh, for students who have paid their tuition fees and have been in contact with us um, for a few months. Um, and basically the students that we vouch for um, once the embassy calls us and I can say, okay, I know that the student, you know, has accommodation. I know where it is. I have the address. I know that they have paid. I have proof that they have paid tuition fees. So of course the embassies sometimes need a little bit of convincing, which is of course something that we will do on our part if we are sure that this student um, will, will come to Croatia. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how, uh, how much funds you have to show in the bank? Uh, don't Okay, I don't understand. Is this meant for visa or to just apply? So actually, for visa, you don't have it. You don't have to. But for the temporary stay permit, you do. So once a student, basically, Croatia doesn't have a student visa. They only have a tourist visa. So once a student applies um, for a visa, it always has to be a C-type visa, which is a tourist one. They get it for 30 to 90 days. And once they arrive in Croatia, they have 48 hours to apply to the police station. So they go and just say like, hey, I'm here. And they have to start their temporary stay uh, process, uh, which requires from them the proof of funding. So the proof of funding on their account has to be, um, I'll tell you an approximation, but I have a document that says like everything they need to have on the account. But approximately it comes up to 25,000 kunas a year, which is, let me just count it, 24,000 kunas is about 3,000 euros um, for the entire year. Because they basically have to show that they have every month uh, to support themselves. In case a student does not have a bank account and doesn't have that much money on their account, it can be their parents' bank account with a statement from a public notary that they will uh, that they will make sure that the student is taken care of it and that the parents are in charge of uh, of funding of the student. Mm -hmm. So, as I understand, after coming with the tourist visa to the country, student must go the police station and then for... with them, of course oh, okay so you go with them yeah and we what is like state. what is like the i would say average time for waiting for the permit so waiting for the permit can sometimes take three to four months but it doesn't matter because once a student submits the temporary stay request they are legally in the country they as soon as they though that deadline of 48 hours doesn't pass and students go with us to the police station um they are legally in Croatia until their temporary stay decision comes. Um, we've never had actually a temporary stay rejection before um, in the past four or five years, at least that I know of. Um, so as soon as they start the process, it's just a bit of a wait, especially now with the situation in the world. Um, it goes even slower, but all of our students are here legally until their decision comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is how long it takes for international students to get a visa and do they need to pay in advance to apply for the visa? Um, that is something that I can't really answer for you. Um, what basically depends on the M from the embassy to embassy. It depends from country to country. There are countries that um, get visas in 48 hours. Uh, there have been cases during Corona where students waited for six months for their visa uh, because the embassies were shut. Uh, we had cases. Usually, I would say two months is is a time that that i would kind of advise students uh to take for visa they always underestimate the situation they apply two three weeks earlier um uh, and kind of their visa process gets postponed because of one document or you never know so i would say two to three months uh is a great time for students to start their their visa process mm -hmm. all right um the next one uh... Is there one contact per campus or the same contact for all campuses? For example, you handle registration only to Croatia or also to other campuses? I only do the Croatian campus. So I have colleagues in the admissions departments, of course, in the US and uh, Dubai that handle uh, that handle their applications, but um, we only do RIT Croatia. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, do you accept any country exclusive agents? So, um, 
No, not really. We haven't signed any exclusive contracts. Uh, what we basically try to do um, is is um, narrow our, our uh, contacts and kind of have a few very reliable agencies. Um, we've had, of course, um, questions about the exclusive contracts as well, which is something that we are open to um, if the agency, uh, at least for an admissions year, um, kind of proves, you know, to be worth of, the, of that exclusivity agreement and uh, provides us with um, at least, you know, not only a number of students, we don't shoot for numbers that much, uh, but what we do look for are academically very strong students. So that mm -hmm. definitely depends on, on the agency and the, the type of student uh, the agency refers to us. Okay. Is there any uh, non-refundable charge if visa was denied? Um, well, the non-refundable part is the deposit. The deposit, once it's paid out to secure the place, a visa or not, that part stays with us. But uh, if a student has paid full tuition fees and their visa has been denied or a semester, doesn't matter, whatever they paid uh, uh, for the university, their visa is denied, they get the full refund back. So we give them the entire tuition fees. In general, if a student gives up until the first day of the semester, we give them the full tuition feedback, except those 400 euros. So there is a full refund, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, should, so should we sign a different agency agreement with different RIT campus or can we sign one? Yes, so we have different, uh, very different uh, contracts for each campus. They are because they have to be, um, they're like different currencies and stuff like that. The contracts are basically similar, but uh, we sign them from campus to campus. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, does student need to go for a visa interview? <laughs> that depends again on the embassy. I honestly don't know. A uh, majority of students, as I remember, have been. Um, have been uh, called in for the interview coming from third world countries, but uh, uh, that is something that the agencies need to check with the embassies directly. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can you please provide us with the entry requirements? Can we just like go with, with the undergraduate degree and then, and then just go up? Mm -hmm. So with the, uh, the, re the requirements for, for undergraduate degree? Right? Yes. Okay. Um, so the requirements are, um, as I said, high school transcripts from all year, years of sky, high school. If the student hasn't finished their high school education yet, they can apply with what they have. So if they're in their final year and if they receive admission, they will get a conditional admission, of course, upon finishing the condition being them finishing uh, their high school. They will need to write a motivational essay of 400 words in English where they can describe um, why they want to come to RIT and what they have done so far. We will, we will attach um, uh, an example of the motivational essay so the students can see how it's done. Um, and then on the motivational interview, we interview them for about 30 minutes about everything about themselves, about their motivation, about the projects they have done so far. Um, and that is it when it comes to the entry requirements to the programs. And higher level education? The higher level education is quite was a bit more complicated. Um, so students need to provide a CV, CV. They need to provide an English proficiency test. Um, they will also again have the interview. They will need to provide letters of references. All of that, of course, on top of their uh, their degree and motivational essay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the next one. Um, how one? Okay. Uh, how one gap have been accepted? I think it's about the gap here. The gap our, yeah. We don't have gap here. If you mean like a foundation year or something like that. Uh, I think it goes with the like gap between the semesters or something like this. Uh-huh. Like if a student has been accepted for September, but then decides to join in January or something yes. like that. Okay. Well, they can always do that. As long as we know students uh, let us know and we, uh, uh, we will defer their admission uh, in, if they pay their deposit to secure their place. We will just issue them new results with the dates of the, the following semester. So they do not have to go through the admissions process again um, if it's for a semester. But if they defer it for a year, they will have to go through uh, the process again, especially if they applied for financial aid. 
which is the popular course program of your university that international students that international students from India choose, and do you have one? Um, hospitality and tourism management program, I would say, is the most popular with with um, students from India, the one in Dubrovnik. Uh, but uh, to be honest, we don't have that many students from India, so uh, both of them are on the hospitality program uh, in Dubrovnik. Mm -hmm. Uh, would it be possible to schedule one-to-one -one meeting with you to discuss some details? Uh, yes, Marcella is on the platform and you can schedule a meeting right there. Mm, okay, if students have any gap during study, whether need experience later or not. So, so if they'd like to take a leave of absence or something? I think yes. Yeah, they can do that. Of course, there are conditions for them doing that and conditions of them coming back. So they cannot take a, like a gap lab leave of absence for a few years. But if there is, of course, something going on, they have some problems or something, they can put their studies on hold um, and come back after a semester. Mm -hmm. uh, will students be granted a work visa to search for a job? I think it's it's meant after the after the studies after graduating. Um, well, they're not going to be provided with with a work visa. Definitely, that's uh, kind of you know you they have to apply for it. They have to secure a job for themselves. Um, but what is the difference? They can uh, they have up to um, a year to find a job in Croatia if they want to secure their work visa. Um, and of course, after that, uh, um, they cannot stay any longer in the country if they did not secure a job. So after, for example, graduating, the student would have one year to find a job. But, but in reality, like usually after finishing the, the RIT, how much time students, like I would say, used to find a job? Is it like half a year or it's faster? It's about six months, yeah. In in those six months, the majority of our students find jobs or they go for a master's degree um, or something else. But in the six months, uh, it's usually enough. It's specifically for IT program. That is even quicker. There is a big, big lack of IT professionals everywhere, I think, but in Croatia um, as well. Uh, so they secure their jobs much, much faster. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one is... Do you have any students from East Africa? Um, East Africa, let me just like connect the map in my head. Um, in East Africa, we have, if I'm correct, I'm so sorry about my ge geography, but if you would put, um, I think Zimbabwe is in East Africa, right? I think it's like more Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Congo, Sudan. We have students from Sudan, yeah. So I, we have three students coming from Sudan, uh, two of them having some connections with Croatia prior to that, um, and one student who is their friend who kind of found out about our RIT that way. Mm -hmm. But the majority of our international students come from US and Canada um, and uh, MENA region, that is a very popular one. And I would say uh, Georgia, uh, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Are kind of and Ukraine, uh, of course, prior to, to, to the situation that is happening now. Mm -hmm. All right, and the next one is um, after an undergraduate degree, students can sustain visa for further study. Um, students can enroll in a master's program, and if they enroll in a full-time master's program in Croatia, they are still on the same temporary state permit that they've been on. Um, if they want to apply somewhere else in Europe, then that's according to the country that they're applying with, so we don't have um, anything to do with that. But if they want to do a master's degree in Croatia, uh, they, can, uh, they can apply for it. At other universities, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, our master's programs are only certified in the U.S., so if the students want to go to our master's programs, they do not have student rights in Croatia. Um, so which means that they wouldn't be able to stay um, on a student visa. We don't have a student visa, but on the, the same, same type of visa. Got it. Uh, if students prepare for a medical exam for a year, then he decides to get admission. One year gap after 12 classes. Mm, medical, like a pre-med? I think, yes. I think that... I think what was meant is that is there a possibility for one gap year? No, no. So we do not have provide gap year. We don't have that. Um, students can come on a tourist visa, of course, 
uh, but uh, we do not provide gap year and I don't think any universities in Croatia actually do. Um, so, mm -hmm. all right. The question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any student exchange program with Indian institutions? No. No. No, so student exchange programs are always either with the um, EU, so the Erasmus program. So we're not a part of the EUK, one of seven that works um, with, with other universities outside of the European Union um, and, of course, with our other campuses as well. Mm -hmm. And the last one, which is like, ah, not the last one, okay. Uh, what, is the, what is the commission, commission percentage? Ah, of course, very important as well. Um, so there is no percentage. So what we do, we have a fixed commission. So our commission um, is uh, 2000 US dollars um, on the tuition fee of the 6,500 euros. I know it's quite confusing uh, due to Euro uh, US dollars, but basically the commission uh, fees come from Rochester while the tuition fees pay directly to Croatia just to elaborate why it's US dollars on, an, on a European uh, on a euro uh, tuition fee. So it's 2000 US dollars per student. 1000 of those, so the first half of that 50% is paid to the agency once a student um, enrolls at the university and finishes first four weeks um, of their studies. So first month they're here, enrolled full-time and then finish it successfully, the agents will receive the 50% of the commission. And then the second part of the commission is when, when a student enrolls in the second semester of the study. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how it works. Okay. Um, after the commission, we got still more questions. <laughs> okay. Um, any, any students from Nepal are studying in Croatia currently? No. No, see, we don't have any students from Nepal. Uh, I'm going to be very frank here, but um, with students from Nepal, uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh, we've had some issues with their visas before. Um, we are trying to change that as much as we can, but it is not unfortunately up to us. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that have been the countries that, that we've had visa rejections from the most. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Just a precision, students without high school diploma can still apply? Students that do not have high school diploma. No, yeah. absolutely not. No, students need to have a high school diploma. They need to have their transcripts. So we are very strict when it comes to documentation. They have to have everything on paper um, and in, or in an original form when they come to Croatia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how about intakes for hospitality management? Yeah, actually, the, this one that I wanted to ask you because on the presentation you had that you have two admissions per year. But, but you did not have any like specific dates. Yeah, so um, the semester starts on the 1st of September in the fall semester every year, if it's a weekday, of course. Um, and on the spring semester, it changes every year, uh, but it's usually mid-January. Mid, uh, so because our semesters are 15 weeks long, and then the 16th week are the final exams, and then again, the same, they have the... the Winter break, um, we come back mid-January, 15 weeks of classes, 16th week, um, final exams. So there is no deadlines to apply since we do have uh, rolling admissions. Uh, but as I said, if a student wants to come, for example, in September, well, now would be a perfect time to apply or May the latest, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. What are some of the undergraduate programs that you have? So it's hospitality and tourism management, international business, and web and mobile computing. Mm -hmm. And do you have any exclusive agreements to the agencies in India or Sri Lanka? No, so we don't do exclusive agreements whatsoever. We are open to them, of course, um, after the agency uh, approves themselves, uh, you know, being a good agency that sends us academically very strong students. Um, uh, so then we would consider it, but it takes a bit of time to, to build those relationships um, and to kind of, you know, decide it's a big deal giving an exclusive agreement. So we don't take it very lightly. Okay. Okay, we got still one question. Mm -hmm. Is transfer to New York campus possible after first or second year? Will they be automatically accepted by the register? No. Um, so, yes, it's possible, of course, but they will not be automatically accepted. Um, the same as the exchange program. You know, in order to go to an exchange program, you have to have good GPA. The same goes um, for transferring there as well. Um, if you have a good GPA, 
great, uh, but yes, students can transfer, of course, if they decide to do so. But just to clarify that their tuition fees are then not no, no longer Croatian. So uh, they will have to transfer on the US ones, of course, or mm -hmm. by. Okay, uh, sorry, the 6.5 thousand euros mentioned in the Net24 platform is per year or full four year degree? It's per year. Per year, yeah. This is a tuition fee per one year of the studies. And don't forget, you have like, a lot of financial aids that are provided also by by the RIT. So it's you have high chances to get you know financial aid and you will be paying less. Uh, okay, Dennis, do you want to add something? Only one thing which I want to add. Thank you, Marcel, one more time. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you again. Have a nice day and stay safe. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.